Wait a minute, how is stuff from 2012 considered attic tier? Well, everything that reaches 10 years of age or more is considered attic tier by us. That's the age that it starts ending up in garbage bins, landfills, cellars, garages and other dungeons, but most importantly, our attic. The PC we are messing around with today belongs to one of us, namely me, and is acting as a main personal machine. It's still alive and kicking and used for daily gaming. So it's a fun coincidence that it's an upgrade we found with a bunch of old scrap CPUs. And that's the crux of today's endeavor. We'll test and analyze its performance before and after the upgrade. So let's see how the 2012 mid-range gaming PC performs. PC we are torturing today is fully built and is encased inside Zalman MS800+. We will disassemble and clean some of the parts prior to the CPU upgrade. As for the parts themselves, let's introduce our motherboard first. Asus P8H77-VLE is a solid mid-range board. It sports all the features you'd want back in the day. The board implements the H77 chipset for the LGA1155 socket, which is a cut-down version of the Z77 chipset, but it's mostly sufficient in this case. The main disadvantage that was noticed during these 10 years is having only two SATA 3 ports, and in time more were needed. The lack of M.2 ports is evident, but not unexpected. Two cores and four threads of Intel Core i3-3240 were more than enough for a great many years. Only the last few had shown where its limitations lie. It's clocked at 3.4 GHz with a total of 512 KB of L2 and 3 MB of L3 cache. When this PC was built, the CPU was an area that the budget was saved on. Seeing how it performed, we can consider that choice lucky, but ultimately a good one. We're switching to Core i5-3570. 4 cores, 4 threads and also clocked at 3.4 GHz. With a total of 1 MB of L2 cache and 6 MB of L3 cache, i5 is essentially double everything inside of the i3 chip, besides the clock and the number of threads, which are the same. Funny enough, both chips have the same Intel HD 2500 integrated graphics. Also, both CPUs are running pretty chill, so we'll cool them with LGA1155 stock Intel cooler. We have two memory sticks of Kingston HyperX DDR3 1600 MHz that make up a kit of 16GB. They are blue, which fits visually into the overall theme of this PC aesthetic, which is nice. The motherboard has two more slots for a total of 32GB of memory, so there is still a viable upgrade path there. Money that was saved on buying a cheaper CPU mostly went to buying a Samsung EVO 840 Pro, 128GB SSD. This is an SSD you'd mostly find in high-end builds of the era. All in all, money is well spent. Many years later, it still serves reliably as this PC's boot drive. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 from Asus certainly doesn't bring any surprises, neither it did back in the day. But it's one fine performer, considering its price back then. It also aged rather well, being eclipsed only recently, with full driver support until 2021. It's quite compact, compared to today's mid-range standards. For power supply unit, we are using Chieftech GPS 450 AA. You may notice that it's somewhat older than the rest of the configuration, but the reason for this is untimely demise of not one, but two Seasonic PSUs, which were initially a part of this build. This solution is of course temporary, and we wouldn't recommend solutions like this if you can avoid it. But you know how temporary solutions go. With everything reassembled, it's time to see the results. We'll start with the rise of the Tomb Raider from 2015. Here we can see how our CPU upgrade enhanced this PC. We have some gains in average FPS, but the candy here is the 1% lows. They improved by almost 50% on the lowest preset, making the game's performance much more stable. Now we are in playable territory for presets higher than the lowest. 
We'll continue with the game from the same year, which is Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Here we see that we didn't improve averages much, because in the end we are limited by our GPU's performance. But our 1% lows improved a lot, making this game playable on the low and medium presets. Next is Doom Eternal, a very well optimized title running on Vulkan and OpenGL. Our upgrade barely made any effect here, as this title is almost always GPU bound. We've only managed to run it on the low preset, as our GTX 660 didn't have enough VRAM to run it on the higher presets. While 1% lows dipped below 30, the gameplay is smooth and the game is pretty much playable on the low preset. In Horizon Zero Dawn we got mild gains with our CPU upgrade. This title seems to be too much for this machine, as both CPU and GPU struggle to output enough frame rate. The low preset seems to be somewhat playable, but stuttering will mar your experience. Next, we'll try to upgrade this machine a bit more, this time with the graphics card upgrade. Our upgrade graphics card of choice is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1063GB. In this price range, it was a great upgrade in 2016-2017. Let's see the results. Rise of the Tomb Raider was already playable on all presets and now we're in a comfortable 60 plus FPS zone. In Witcher, while the 1% low on low preset hasn't been raised by much, the average FPS sure was. With the new GPU, our machine performs much better on medium and high presets, making it more than playable on both. Horizon Zero Dawn now works in the high preset and is playable on all of them. Here are the results for the synthetic benchmarks we ran. We've added results from Budget Build 2017 and Midrange 2020 for reference. These references should not be taken as a precise scale of performance, especially on older benchmarks and games. But they provide interesting insight into performance gains PCs got over the last few years. Our 2012 mid-range machine not only stood the test of time, but quite a few of them. While sort of expecting it, we were still surprised how much it stayed relevant after all these years. It stood its ground against 5 years younger budget variant. Against mid-range from 2020, it didn't fare so well. But we can only wonder if our 2020 machine will age as well as our 2012 veteran did. With the 2016 GPU upgrade, this PC is mostly relevant even today. While we haven't benchmarked esports games like Rocket League and Counter Strike, we can confirm that they perform flawlessly. With the exception of some of the most recent games, new releases work fine on low and sometimes even medium preset. If you find yourself stuck in 2012, this configuration is one of the best investments you can make. You may already have some ideas about the other investments. We've had a lot of fun rebuilding, upgrading and testing this machine. Hope you had as much fun as we did. See you around!